Hello there and welcome back to some more Forza Top Gear laps today oh, we are taking a look at some retro SUVs and we're kicking things off with the 1970 International Scout 193 horsepower, 273 foot pound torque, 3,615 pounds of weight. The International Scout made its Forza debut in Forza Horizon 3 as a barn find on Blizzard Mountain and since then hasn't really done a whole lot. That being said, I do see quite a lot of love for the International Scout within my circle. I remember uh, specifically on Horizon 3 this thing had a fantastic noise when you equipped it with the supercharger. I do quite like the International Scout, it's a very honest vehicle, very uh, rugged, tough vehicle, doesn't really care much about style, it's just all about utilitarian features. And I like that. Um, as far as it goes to drive, well, honestly it is very much a case of as you'd expect. When it comes to a big old SUVs like this, again, it's from 1970. It's hardly going to be one of these SUVs that can do so much these days, you know, be a sports car, be utilitarian, be able to go off-road, etc, etc. This thing has one purpose, to go off-road and take some people with you and some luggage while you're doing it. It is, as you'd expect, it is a very, very soft car. Of course, as you'd expect, the suspension very sort of softy, off-roady. Um, whatever. It does have a weird differential, this as well. You sort of go around a corner, it's almost like you're driving a front-wheel drive car. All it wants to do is just spin its power through some of the wheels instead of actually putting it to the ground in a semi sort of logical way. Um, the one advantage of this car though is it does have a sport four-speed transmission, which is one more speed than I was expecting out of this thing. So that's something positive about the Scout, but as it goes to drive, it's just not a particularly great car to drive and you wouldn't really expect it to be. Next up we have the 1975 Ford Bronco, 205 horsepower, 300 foot pound torque, 3,545 pounds of weight. This is the lightest car here today. A Ford Bronco is the lightest car here today. That's how you know you're in for a very big treat of an episode. Uh, yeah, the Ford Bronco, a car which, well, has gained much fanfare, and it's easy to see why. It's got an iconic look, people love it. Again, similar reasons to the Scout, it's sort of a rugged, go-anywhere, didn't-really-care vehicle, sort of a small SUV as well, which helped, because, yeah, it's just a small SUV, people like small SUVs. Um, as far as this one goes to drive, it is way, way nicer to drive than that Scout was. It is much more poised, uh, the brakes are a lot better, Handling in general is a lot better. This one hasn't got a weird diff. Got a little bit of body roll, but not too much. You can sort of see through that corner. It's actually relatively flat for this sort of car, which you wouldn't really expect. Um, yeah, the Bronco is more impressive than the Scout. However, the Scout does edge it out on overall top speed. I mean, the Scout is more powerful. It does have less torque and it weighs slightly more. But the big advantage the Scout has over the Bronco is it has a four speed transmission while the Bronco only has a free speed, which really does mean it suffers quite badly as a result of that. Uh, which is unfortunate, because if the Bronco had the same gearbox as the Scout did, this would be so much quicker than the Scout, but just as it stands, just isn't quite as good. Next up, oh boy, I hope you like a long lapse, because we have the 1985 Nissan Safari Turbo Diesel. 108 horsepower, 188 foot pound torque, 3,671 pounds of weight. This is the least powerful car here today, and it's the least torquey car. It is one of two diesel motors that we have here today. And uh, yeah, this one is very much typical old worldy diesel, i.e. incredibly slow. It, it's not a quick car, there's no real joking about that. I will say, uh, I do like the Safari, all in all, as a package. I'll get back to more of its driving impressions later. I do actually really like the Safari. I liked it when this car came into the game. It was in that weird SUV uh, car pack that no one liked. It had a cool trailer, but that was about it. But I actually like this thing. I like the fact it's a turbo diesel, because I, I kind of like diesel cars in racing games for some reason. Not in real life, but in racing games, sure. Uh, yeah, it's just a fun... Sort of SUV, again, sort of small, compact, uh, and it's Japanese, which means I quite like it. Uh, but yeah, in terms of its actual driving impressions, I can't fault this car. It's very nice to drive. It's wonderfully nice to drive. It's so, just turns into the corners nicely, brakes are decent. Of course, the reason the brakes are decent and it handles well, and I haven't really got too many complaints about the way it takes corners, is because it is agonizingly slow. 
this is more it's so slow this is the slowest car I've driven around this track in months like literal months it's so slow it is just I, I can't say any more than that and I feel sorry for it because otherwise the safari is good but my god is it slow Next up, we have the 1991 Jeep Grand Wagoneer, 144 horsepower, 280 foot-pound torque, 4,499 pounds of weight. I love the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. This thing's fantastic. Uh, basically, what it is is it's a station wagon that's been lifted. It's from 1991 and it has wood paneling, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. I actually really like the way uh, the Wagoneer looks. It's sort of Rugged and tough, but at the same time, it isn't afraid to show uh, the fact that it was indeed basically just a lifted station wagon with all-wheel drive. Uh, and that's what I like about it, and of course these things are actually relatively capable off-road, uh, which is something nice. So yeah, it's a really good all-round vehicle, basically taking off where the AMC Eagle failed. And, well, people who've watched Top Gear Laps for years at this point will know that I like the Jeep Grand Wagoneer a lot, because... It was a great car to drive in Forza 6. I love driving this thing in Forza 6. And in Forza 7, it's absolutely the same. It is an absolutely excellent car to drive. You can see through the corners just how little body roll this thing has. It doesn't roll around. It gets through corners nicely. The brakes are excellent. The turning's pretty good for a car this size. You don't really feel the weight in it. It is absolutely excellent. I really like driving it. However, does have an Achilles heel. The gearbox in this thing is awful. It's a free speed auto. Uh, I believe the third gear tops out at like 150 miles an hour. I didn't even touch third gear in this. I believe I think I was only using first and second. First goes up to about 60 miles an hour and second will go basically to space. Yeah, the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, awful, awful gearbox, not a lot of speed, but other than that, a great car to drive. Next up, the 1997 Land Rover Defender 90. 182 horsepower, 232 foot pound torque, 3,902 pounds of weight. And of course, I am Britishman, and naturally, I have to stick up for the Land Rover Defender. I do quite like the Defender, to be honest with you. Probably one of the better Land Rover products. Um, I'm not a huge Land Rover person, you know, just because I'm, well, I've been a town person most of my life, so. Uh, I, I don't really see the purpose of these things, at least for around here, but for the countryside, they're excellent. I can fully see why people buy them, and the Defender, of course, one of the most, what's the word I'm looking for, charismatic off-roaders on the market. Of course, Defender, uh, I believe it was killed off, but bought back. I can't, I have no idea what's happening with the Defender, but this is the Defender 90. This was an American Special Edition with a V8 engine and a 4-speed automatic gearbox. Uh, as far as it drives, it's fine. It, it's not quite as good as the Wagoneer or so on, but, you know, it's a fine car to drive. There's no massive complaints I can have with it. One complaint I do have is, well, it's slow, uh, but also it makes a terrible noise. The V8 in this, it sounds like a coal-chugging diesel. It really is not a good-sounding engine underneath the Defender, and it doesn't really get any better the more it goes up to Redline. In, in fact, it starts to sound worse, to be honest with you. Awful sound. Uh, but yeah, it, it's fine enough to drive. I wouldn't exactly call it a precision SUV, I wouldn't say it's the best one, uh, but it's not terrible. Now, I will say, when it comes to retro SUVs, as much as we like to joke about how many SUVs there are in Forza, there's honestly not that many, so these next two cars are sort of pushing the retro thing. Uh, this is the 2008 Volkswagen Touareg R50 V10 TDI, 346 horsepower, 626 foot-pound torque, 5, uh, 5,745 pounds of weight. This is the most torquey car here today, and it's the heaviest car here today. And I can't wait to talk to you about the Touareg, because I love this thing. It has a V10 turbo diesel engine. That is fantastic. It makes a fantastic noise. This is by far and away the best sounding diesel I have ever heard. It literally just sounds like a V10 with more groaning in it. It's fantastic. I think it's mental. I love it when people just go mental with stuff, especially mental with diesel engines. It's the same with the V12, Audi Q7. Yeah, I, I love this Touareg. Um, as far as it goes to drive, it is hilariously quick. It, just that torque combined with the all-wheel drive, it is stupid quick accelerating. But that acceleration eventually means you have to get to a corner. And once you get to a, uh, a corner, you suddenly realise the Torag has one major issue. It is too heavy. There is a lot of weight in this car. It is 
Not a good handling car, the brakes aren't particularly good, but it is worth driving, purely so you can hear the V10 diesel note, and well, if you want to build something a bit silly for maybe a drag lobby, and look at the V10 uh, TDI Touareg, it is fascinating, fascinating, excellent mentalness. And finally today, the 2009 Mercedes-Benz ML63 AMG, 503 horsepower, 464 foot-pounds, 5,093 pounds of weight. This is the most powerful car we have here today. Of course, this is the other end of the crazy uh, SUV spectrum. This one, unlike the V10 Touareg, is equipped with a 6.2 litre V8 petrol engine. Uh, which basically means it makes the same noise that a C63 would, which is incredible. Uh, unfortunately, the engine noise is probably the only good thing I can say about this car. Oh, and it's stupidly fast. It is very, very quick. However, it is awful to drive. Uh, I drove a G-Class a long, long time ago, and every time I drive the G-Class, I remark that it's hilariously just stupid to drive. It just should not drive the way it does. And the ML63 is no different to the way the G-Class drives. Maybe it's a little bit more refined, it's slightly more PI. Maybe it's got a little bit more handling, but honestly, behind the wheel, it doesn't feel like it. It still feels stupid. It wallows everywhere. It, the brakes are awful. It's just not a good car to drive. I have nothing nice to say about the way this thing is, other than the fact that it sounds great and it's quick. Uh, but if I wanted something that sounds great and is quick, I'd go for the Touareg. On to the leaderboard then, and the Mercedes-Benz ML63 AMG you just saw was the quickest car today. It goes into the 96th place with 125.395. Considering that's a low B-class car, that's not a particularly impressive time, but considering how bad that car was to drive, uh, it isn't too terrible. Beats out Skyline and Impreza loses to a couple of Imprezas and an Evo. Moving down the board, in 149th place we find the Volkswagen Touareg R50 V10 TDI with 131. 0.256, which isn't actually a terrible time, a little bit quicker than Super Legacy, Eagle Talon, Volvo 850, slightly slower than the Eclipse, and the Honda Prelude. We find most of the other cars hanging out, uh, well, in exactly the same block. In 176th place, we find the Ford Bronco, with a 137.471, which makes it slightly slower then an old Escort, and just behind that, in 177th place, is the International Scout, or 137.764, uh, which was probably helped out massively by its straight line speed. In 178th place, we find the Land Rover Defender 90, with a 138.606, so the Defender is actually about a second off of the Scout and Bronco, which is actually pretty interesting. Uh, the Defender, of course, weighed a lot more than those cars, but even still, quite surprising. And finally today, in 189th place, we find the Nissan Safari Turbo Diesel, with a 149.635, making it the second slowest car we've ever had. Admittedly, we haven't had too many sort of low-end, absolute bottom-of-the-barrel cars go around the track yet, but uh, yeah, the Safari ain't quick. I mean, it's five seconds off of a modern Land Cruiser, which actually isn't too terrible, but yeah, the Safari, it's not built for speed, is it? Anyways, I want to thank you all very much for watching this edition of Forza Top Gear Laps. Next time, I'm going to be taking a look at modern SUVs, so join me for that. Until then, farewell. It's the end of the world as we